Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago. We are studying about faith in God. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your glorious love for us. Father, we thank you for your great mercy upon us. Father, we thank you. Your words are truth. Father, we thank you. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your words will never pass away. Father, we thank you. Your words are making us wise and able to inherit the blessing. Father, we thank you so much. Your words are life to us who has found them, health, healing and medicine to all our flesh. Father, we pray you teach us your word today. Father, we pray you grant us wisdom, knowledge, understanding and revelation in your word, your will and your love. Father, we pray you grant us ideas, concepts and insights. Father, we pray you show us great and mighty things that we do not know. Father, we pray you show us wonderful things out of your word. Father, we pray you grant us word in due season. Father, we pray you grant us words. Uh, answers and solutions father we thank you so much for your mighty hand father we pray you stretch out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders be done by the name of thy holy child holy child jesus father we thank you that your healing power is present to heal every anyone who has any form of any manner of sickness and disease father we praise you we worship you and adore you father in the name of our lord jesus we pray amen hallelujah hallelujah to jesus you know if you have if you are suffering from any form of sickness and disease exercise your faith god will heal you today hallelujah hallelujah to jesus you will receive your healing Hallelujah to Jesus. Have, have an expectation. Father, I thank you that your healing power is working in my body and I am being healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. And our God is a healer. Our God has always been a healer. And our God is still the healer. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. So if you are suffering from any form of sickness and disease, listen with an expectation and you, you will be healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God of the doctrine of the baptisms and of laying on of hands and of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment hallelujah to Jesus now our, the Holy Ghost is presenting to us six doctrines here and he is calling them the foundation doctrines of Christ hallelujah hallelujah to Jesus and every Christian ought to know these doctrines and every Christian ought to master them, become an expert in these things and use these doctrines throughout their life until they go home to be with the Lord. Hallelujah! Hallelujah to Jesus! You understand this? The, if you would do that, your Christian walk will be strong. Your faith will be strong. You will have strong purpose, strong determinations and you will do great things for God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Alright, now we are focusing on faith toward God in this particular series. So let's go to our text for uh, the faith subject. Mark chapter 11. Let's read from verse uh, 22. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. You know, that's a good suggestion, you know. <laughs> that, that, that's a very good counsel. It's, it's a commandment, actually speaking. You know, faith is not an option. Faith is a must in Christianity. Hallelujah. That's what Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe. Not may believe, if you want to believe. No, must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So faith is not an option. 
faith is not just for some super spiritual christian faith is a must and a necessity for every christian hallelujah hallelujah to jesus so let's read verse 23 in verse 23 and 24 jesus is teaching us how to use that faith how to release that faith uh, you know and overcome challenges receive answers hallelujah verse 23 let's look at that for verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain Notice Jesus is saying that we have to release our faith through words. Till now in this story, in this series we have covered the importance of faith, the benefits of faith, right? What the Bible teaches about the usage of faith. We have looked at how God has given us his faith to us. God has given us the same faith that Jesus used when he was functioning in the world. God has given us the mountain moving faith the world overcoming faith to us every believer has it and we also spoke about how to develop that faith right first of all we said you should nourish your faith with the word of god by reading studying meditating on the word of god by hearing strong anointed messages of god's word your faith will be nourished and your faith will become strong and then the second part we said uh, you should use your faith and a faith should be manifested in your life in your lifestyle in your works the faith that is in your heart heart should take the form of works in your life what you believe should be lived out in your life we gave you the example of the woman with the issue of blood we looked at how abraham offered up isaac because he believed god would raise him up god would actually raise him up from the dead we looked at the faith of rehab she, she believed the god of israel is the god of heaven and earth and how he has given jericho and all the land of canaan into the hands of israel and as a result of that faith she protected the spies of israel saved their lives hallelujah her faith manifested itself as an action an act of faith and as a result she was protected everybody in that city was dead except for rehab and her family hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah to jesus and talk about protection Now the Bible says a thousand shall fall at your side, a ten thousand at your right hand. Literally, in Rahab's life, thousands of people died on her left and her right. But she and her family were saved. Hallelujah to Jesus. So we spoke about how faith should, should, uh, should be followed by corresponding actions. Your faith should be lived out in your life. Your faith should produce works. that's when your faith will actually become strong 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 and now from the previous uh, last two messages i think we are speaking about the importance of words in faith right every believer ought to know how to speak speaking is 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 an, is, is an important thing right you can't just open your mouth and blabber whatever comes to your mind You know, one of the attributes of a righteous man is this. Go with me to Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15. Look at verse 28. The heart of the righteous. You are the righteousness of God. You have been washed by the blood of Jesus. You have been made righteous freely by grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So you are a righteous man. It is talk, this verse is talking about you. So notice the heart. Again notice the connection between the heart and the mouth. Right? Hallelujah. The heart of the righteous studies to answer. Meaning the heart of the righteous studies. things before it speaks it doesn't just open its mouth and blabber whatever it feels or whatever comes to its mind or whatever emotion that is you know boiling up on the inside at that moment the heart of the righteous does not just uh, respond to the pressures of the circumstances or the pressures of the people 
the heart of the righteous studies things about what god would want it to say at that point at that moment in that situation in that circumstance the heart of the righteous will think about okay what does the bible has to say about this you remember our lord jesus you know you know how they brought this woman who was caught in the adultery you know some of they they missed the man you know the woman cannot commit adultery by herself right but they left the man they let him go free right they brought only the woman and uh, they were putting pressure on jesus you know they did not bring her because they were so zealous for the law no they they did this particularly to test jesus to catch him to see what he would do they were hoping jesus would make a mistake and they can use it against him and they were willing to use the life of a woman for that right they brought the woman and they were putting pressure on jesus and uh, you know <laughs> the law of the moses says you know a woman like who has been caught in adultery like this should be stoned to death what do you say you know jesus did not allow their pressure allow their pestering right to to make him answer in a hurry no he he bent down and he was scribbling on the floor what do you think he was doing jesus always constantly said i speak only what the father tells me right jesus does not just open his mouth and blab no he waits to hear from the father and he speaks what the father tells him to speak see jesus was in the middle of meeting he was teaching people healing people and these fellows came and interrupted the meeting so what did jesus do jesus didn't just answer them he waited right he waited to hear from the father he, when he was scribbling on the floor he was just buying time and once he heard from the father he spoke one sentence i want you to read that along with me you know most people would would would, would probably give a lecture or a speech that would last for an hour <laughs> right something like that right but jesus did not say do anything like that Jesus heard from the father Jesus received wisdom from the father and he spoke that wisdom notice all he said was this he that is without sin among you let him first cast a stone at her that's all he said that's all he said one sentence all the planning all the expectation of the you know the, the jewish people came to nothing their entire plan was spoiled they thought they will catch jesus now they were <laughs> they had to walk away because their own conscience was telling them you better not lift that stone i know what you did <laughs> right it's interesting because you know the first ones to leave were the older ones you know <laughs> right verse 9 it says and they which heard it being convicted by their own, their own conscience see it's not like somebody else was telling hey, i know what you did no <laughs> their own conscience convicted them they went out one by one beginning at the eldest why the eldest have done more sin <laughs> they have done more okay? the, the conscience is probably their conscience gave them a list <laughs> right so the eldest walked out first right even unto the last right and the elders starting with the elders to go went down to the younger ones <laughs> at, at the end nobody was there only jesus was left alone see jesus could have done so many things here he could have said hey where is the man did this woman commit adultery by herself what are you guys trying to do where is the man right jesus could have said something like that he could have built a case he could have argued with them he could have said so many things to those people in fact in one place jesus says i have a lot of things to say about you fellows see but i don't speak anything that i want i speak only what the father says you see how jesus operated you know jesus ruled in his life by his words 
we are going to look at jesus today hmm? jesus ruled in his life using his words using his words go with me to matthew chapter 8 matthew chapter 8 look at verse 16 when the even was come they brought unto him many that were possessed with the devils and he cast out the spirits with his word how did jesus cast out the spirits with his word right he just tells them get out come out of that man right he speaks and the evil spirits obeyed jesus didn't you know beat that fellows you know to try all the different kinds of uh, you know tricks that uh, you know normal exorcists try you know have you seen exorcists the sons of seva you see in ephesus right that there were people like that during the time of jesus in fact in one place jesus says okay he, you <laughs> your sons will judge you because there were sons of the pharisees and the sadducees who were involved in exorcism and to an extent they were successful in you know in casting out demons and um, <laughs> so jesus would say you know these guys would be accusing jesus of casting out uh, demons by belzebub so jesus would say so if i am casting out by belzebub how are your sons casting out demons they will be your judges right hallelujah hallelujah to jesus but anyway you know jesus was uh, casting out demons by the holy spirit by the finger of god hallelujah so here we can see he cast out spirits with his word he was not trying hard working hard right you know some people when they try to cast out demons by the time they cast out demons it's like it's like they went to a boxing match right all sweated out worn out tired right <laughs> no jesus did not do all that jesus simply spoke to the evil spirits commanded the evil spirits to leave and they left notice what did jesus used to cast out the spirits his word say word word and healed all that were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses see jesus is going to accomplish this on the cross he is going to carry all our sicknesses diseases and our pains so based on that redemptive work he was casting out demons and he was he was healing all that were sick hallelujah hallelujah to jesus now one particular man understood the uh, way jesus works there was this centurion from capernaum right he came to jesus and to this is what he had to say verse 6 and saying lord my servant lieth at, at home sick of the palsy grievously tormented and jesus saith unto him i will come and heal him jesus actually was willing to go to his house and heal that man but the centurion understood something about jesus the centurion understood how jesus operates he got some revelation from the holy spirit look at verse 8 the centurion answered and said lord i am not worthy that thou should come under my roof but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed notice he understood something about jesus he he understood that jesus got authority over sickness and disease jesus rules and reigns over sickness and disease jesus dominates sickness and disease if jesus would open his mouth and say a word sickness and disease has to flee then he understood that he understood that and so he said speak the word only and my servant shall be healed right and then he gives his gives an explanation on why he believes this he's saying i am a man under authority underline that word authority having soldiers under me and i say to this man go and he goes to another come and he comes and to my servant do this he do with it 
See, he understood authority. See, he himself, as a, as a centurion, is, is under authority of somebody like a general, right? And he also has soldiers under his command. And because he has authority over those soldiers, if he says, go to one man, he goes. To another, he says, come, and he comes. He calls somebody and says, do this, and he will do it. Why? He got authority. So he understood that Jesus has authority over sickness and disease. So he's saying, you don't have to come to my house. Just speak the word and the disease will be healed. My servant will be healed. Hallelujah. See, this is how Jesus operated and this man grasped it. Look at what Jesus had to say about him. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Right? That includes Jesus, the twelve disciples of Jesus, the women who followed Jesus, the seventy people who, whom Jesus sent to, you know, preach and teach. Right? And to heal people of sickness and disease and cast out demons. And all the people who fo who are following Jesus, all the all the Pharisees, all the Sadducees, all the high priests, everybody, right? Jesus is saying, "I have not seen so great faith like this in in the entire Israel." This man has understood how I function. Hallelujah! Notice how Jesus used his words. Jesus used his words wisely to diffuse a situation. Jesus used his words to cast out demons. Jesus used his words to heal people. Go with me to Luke. Luke chapter 4. Here, uh, the mother-in-law of Peter is, 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 has great fever. Not little amount of fever, great fever. You know, people say when you have this kind of fever, you become even delusional. This is uh, fatal, right? This is not an ordinary fever. She was taken with great fever. Uh, let's read from verse 38. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever. Notice what did Jesus do? In this instance, he is not praying to the father. Father, heal this woman from the fever. Nothing wrong with this. You know, the Bible says, ask and it shall be given to you. The Bible says, you know, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe, you receive them and you shall have them. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the father in my name, he will give it to you. Right? The Bible has given us great and exceeding great precious promises. So we can use those prayers, those promises, pray based on those promises and believe God for healing from fever and nothing is wrong with that. But Jesus is doing something different here. right? Notice what he is doing. He went, stood over her and he rebuked the fever. He looked at the woman. He spoke directly to the fever. Here he is not praying to the Father. You remember Jesus said, Whosoever shall say to the mountain. Notice he didn't say, Pray to the Father about the mountain. No, he said, Say to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. Here he is speaking directly to the fever. This is not a prayer. This is a command. Jesus is ruling and reigning over sickness and disease through his words. He looked at the fever and said, Fever, I rebuke you. Fever, I command you to leave this woman right now. He would have said something like that. He rebuked the fever. And it left her. <laughs> Some people will think that that's weird, man. You, you speak to fig trees, mountains. You speak to diseases. You speak to fever. Hey, Jesus spoke to the fever. Jesus spoke to the wind and the sea. Jesus spoke to the fig tree. Jesus spoke to evil spirits. Jesus did. And he also said, 
those who believe in me will do the things that i did hallelujah hallelujah to jesus you know jesus is expecting you and me to do what he did hallelujah you know go with me to john chapter 14 read verse 12 it says verily verily i say unto you he that believeth on me the works that i do shall he do also so jesus is want wanting us to do what he did jesus ruled and reigned over evil spirits through his word jesus ruled and reigned over his circumstances through his word jesus diffused problems through his word Hmm? When people plotted against him, in him, he he heard the from the father and spoke what the father said. The entire problem was solved within a matter of moments. Hmm? Jesus spoke and diseases left. He rebuked the fever and the fever heard Jesus and it left. right and jesus wants you and me to do the same he said he that believes in me the works that i do shall he do also the bible says be imitators of christ hallelujah and that's why he has given us his name the name of jesus because the name of jesus will do whatever jesus did do you understand this in the very next verse says this whatsoever you shall ask or demand in my name if you study the greek it it, it includes the meaning demand right whatsoever you shall ask or demand in my name you know demand whatever god has promised us or has already given to us through christ jesus that i will do <laughs> if you shall ask or demand anything in my name i will do it See notice how he has connected the works with his name hallelujah so when you speak in the name of jesus demons will have to leave when you speak in the name of jesus sickness and disease will have to leave when you speak in the name of jesus to your circumstances they have to obey we will quickly look at something in mark chapter 4 and then we will close for today you know how jesus you know got into a boat and he was crossing the sea right before they left he said let us pass over unto the other side he did not say let us go half way through the lake and then you know sink down to the bottom that's not what he said what did he say let us pass over unto the other side he has already released his words right and his words will enable them to pass to the other side hallelujah in between they faced a problem verse 37 there arose a great storm of wind the waves beat into the ship and it was now full so it's a serious problem right great storm of the wind not ordinary storm and the waves were beating into the ship and uh, it was filling it up with water so this is a fatal problem if you take god out of the situation these guys were going to die right but the thing is god is not taken out of this issue god is very much involved in this issue right he has already said let us pass over to the other side hmm verse 38 and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow jesus was not acting here and some people say he was acting no he was not and if he was acting the bible would say so you remember when the disciples were going to emmaus right and uh, the Bi- uh, the bible actually says jesus made as if he is going further but these people will insist you know stay with us it's already late and so on right and uh, to, uh, just to in a sense we are uh, almost out of time let's move on right so but jesus was not acting here he was actually asleep these people went and woke him up and they asked him master carest thou not that we perish see jesus has already given them his word he said let us pass over unto the other side meaning they will pass over to the other side he cares for them he didn't wait for the problem to come and then give them the answer he gave them the answer before the problem came up that's how god works you know hallelujah you know esther was made queen before haman ever came into the picture the answer was made ready before the problem 
that's how god functions if you will pay attention to the holy spirit you will find out that god has already given you the answer before the problem ever came up hallelujah verse 39 what did jesus do so he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea See, notice here again, Jesus did not pray to the Father. Nothing wrong with it. Like we have already said, there are plenty of promises that ask us to pray to the Father. And when we pray to the Father in faith, He will answer, He will help. Nothing wrong with it. But here, God is revealing to us another facet of faith. You remember Jesus said two things. Verse 23 is speaking about using your words against the problem. Verse 24 is talking about using your faith and praying and receiving answers. So he is giving us two different uh, ways of using our faith. We are focusing on verse 23. Using our words in faith against the problems to overcome problems to receive answers and so on. Right? So he arose and rebuked the wind. He spoke to the wind directly. That's what Jesus is teaching in verse 23, Mark 11. Speak to the mountain. To the mountain. Right? So Jesus, what, what's the problem here? The wind is the problem. What's the other problem? The sea is raging because of the wind. So Jesus went to the root, root problem first. It's because of the wind the sea is raging. Right? So he first dealt with the wind. He rebuked the wind. Hmm? You know, many times there are problems happening here and there and everywhere because the, the, there is a spiritual uh, force behind the problem, you know, raising up the problem. And the devil is working from behind the scenes. So often it would be wise for you to bind the works of the devil first and then deal with the problem. It, it will be easier. Hallelujah. So Jesus rebuked the wind first and then spoke to the sea. He, he, he also spoke to the sea, but first he rebuked the wind. And then he spoke to the sea saying, Peace! Be still. The wind ceased. There was a great calm. You see how Jesus ruled and reigned over his circumstances, using his words. And Jesus is expecting us to do the same. He wants us to speak to our circumstances. He wants us to speak to the problems that we are facing. It may be sickness, it may be disease, it may be financial problems. <coughs> it may be problems in the family, it may be problems raising up children. Right? Whatever it is. Speak to the problem. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Right? Listen to the Holy Spirit. Ask Him, what shall I say about my situation? What do I speak about my situation? And the Holy Spirit will teach you what to say. Search the Bible. Right? Find, uh, find promises that, that handle your situation. Find the verses that, that deal with your situation. Right? Just read them, study them, meditate on them and ask the Holy Spirit to give you words to speak. And then speak those words. It will fix your problem. It will help you overcome. It will help you receive answers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you so much. We, we will continue this study in the next message. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Jesus is coming soon. <laughs>